How's everybody's week been? We're getting a week closer to getting onto the ocean. For those who may not know me or may not have seen me before or joined us on Facebook Live, my name is Chef John Ashton and I have had the good fortune to sail around this beautiful world with Crystal Cruises for over 13 years. I've learned so much from our wonderful culinary team on board and I've learned so many lessons as I visit various countries. Today we're going to be highlighting Italy. We're going to make one of my favorite dishes, penne alla vodka. A great dish, absolutely delightful. I want to go into the ins and outs of how we make it. So hopefully there are some people and we are alive. <laughs> good. First of all, and today I think we'll have questions. I want to apologize as well to some folks last week. I never got to all your comments. Uh, we're still new to this, hence the la uh, it's not a big production like we normally do do. So it's just me and Mrs. Spielberg's on the camera. Mrs. Spielberg, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so when it's cooking pasta is a technique that I feel some people just um, need to polish up a little bit because um, there is a technique for it. What I normally do when I get a new brand of pasta, I test it out. So as we come over here, Mrs. Spielberg, take a look for us out here. This is where I usually started off five minutes before. So whatever the box says, I always find that the box, it never seems to work the time that they have on the box. So whether you, whatever brand you like or you can get your hands on, it's important to just remember that the box usually isn't correct or it could be in a package. This one was five minutes under and you can see it's real firm, real firm. And then it went four minutes under, three minutes under, two minutes under, one minute under. And then I went five minutes over, five, four, three, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. And then we got to five minutes over. We can see the pasta now has just completely fell apart. And that's overcooked. Whereas one minute under to that, and you can see the color, see the way it's more white than what this is. You can tell the difference. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because they often use that term in the, uh, Italian cooking al dente and that means just crisp to the tooth so i want to teach you today how to cook pasta once you learn how to cook pasta whether it's penne you can go in any direction there's over 500 different cuts of different italian pasta um what we're going to be using is the large cup penne so we're using the big one but you can actually get the meze the small cut as well it's your own personal preference if you're doing a multi-course meal I'd probably say go for the smaller cut if it was a multi-course meal, which we do in Italy. Pasta really isn't the main course. It'll just be one of the courses beforehand. Um, if you're going to be doing it as a main course, I'd say about four ounces. In Italy, they serve about three ounces per portion, but here in the United States, four ounces. So a 16 ounce box, a pound of pasta is going to serve four people. Uh, if you're going to do it for a, a small sample portion, just do about two ounces so we're going to be using this penne we're going to be using some oregano i call it oregano in the um for the united states or oregano. what do you call it oregano oregano oregano, oregano. i can't say the thing oregano Th this stuff here <laughs> so we got some chili flake chili flake garlic some vodka now there's vodka in the sauce and the common question people ask me what does the vodka do? They say it brings out some of the flavors in tomatoes that if you didn't have it did, it wouldn't do. I think what happened really many moons ago, there was a man who loved a wee drinky poo and probably what happened, the, the owner came in the restaurant and he had vodka there and he was <laughs> having a, oh, put it in, you're working on a new recipe, a new recipe, but we've got some vodka. Feel free to use your own brand of vodka what you like there are many out there your own personal preference today i'm going to be using a jarred sauce now many of you may say 
John, ay, 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 you're a chef, why are you using this? And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to show you a midweek meal, something that you can make in your home. Um, there are many jarred sauces out there. Some of them have a lot of sugar and high fructose corn syrup, and they're really sweet when you try them. And they're just like, oh, goodness gracious, by Jove. That's, it's almost like a dessert or a tomato ketchup. Um, I found Rayo's is a delicious tomato sauce and marinara sauce absolutely delightful it has a, a wonderful acidity they import the tomatoes from italy um, it's got a little bit of olive oil in there no sugars fantastic you can make your own marinara sauce at home it's pretty basic really it's just tomatoes basil a little bit of chili flake when it comes to buying tomatoes tomatoes i'm trying to trying to be north american when it comes to purchasing them uh, you have several options at the store. Mrs. Spielberg, I just want to show you. You have chopped tomatoes. So chopped tomatoes, remember, when you purchase chopped tomatoes, they're going to have a lot of water content. So this is a good, good time for the manufacturers to make money. So they'll put all of this water in there. So the weight of the can, you lose a lot of it. Then we have the crushed tomatoes. The problem is with crushed tomatoes, there's no laws. The FDA doesn't have any laws on that. So that can contain as much tomato paste in there or as much water. I always say buy the tomatoes whole. So purchase your tomatoes whole and crush them yourself. First thing I like to do with them is actually just cut them because if you crush them, if you crush them with your hand at first, it's gonna go all over your apron or your nice uh, dress or shirt what you're wearing so I normally give them a snip with the scissors and then I crush them by hand I never really blend my tomatoes I like that ununiformed texture for it okay so that's a little bit of the cooking side of uh, on tips etc let's get stuck into the recipe when you're purchasing garlic what you want to do when you go to stores give it a squeeze as the garlic gets hot as it gets older it becomes more hollow so what we want to do is we want the one that's firm when it comes to opening a garlic bulb just take your hand put it on the top feel free if you want if you're worried about your nails or hurting yourself to use a kitchen towel and just press down so what we're doing is we're pressing down as we press down now we've got the individual cloves now You've adopted me at home. You've all adopted me and uh, you allow me to spend time each Sunday. We have our Sunday cooking class. Please, please, please don't use the stuff in the jar. Don't use that garlic, that pre-minced garlic. It's in a, a, a citric acid and it's, it's just not very swell. You see this part here? We want to trim that off. You can see that little part. We're gonna take the root off and we're just gonna snip that with the knife. Do you see the way we've snipped it? And we're just gonna bash it. We're just gonna bash it. And when we bash it, just watch how easy this comes off, Mrs. Spielberg. What do you think of that? It's good. Look at that. That was pretty easy. What do you think? I think I could do that. You think you could do it? Yeah. Okay, well that's good. Just snip off the end, just snipping it off. Give it a bashing, just a small bashing. And now, it comes off really easy and that's how effortless it is just to peel garlic just by bashing them so we're going to use three to depending on the size of the cloves three to five and I've got a nice sharp knife I'm just going to take the knife and we're just going to slice the garlic now we're just slicing it into thin slices the smaller you chop garlic, the, the stronger it's going to be. So when we think about Asian foods, they'll mince garlic. The Italians have a tendency to slice garlic. You've got two different chemical compounds coming together. If you smell a garlic bulb, you can't really smell the garlic. But once you start mixing the chemicals together, that's when you release the smell. The more you chop it, the stronger it gets. We're just gonna slice it thinly like that. At this stage now, I'm gonna get my bench scraper. We talked about this several weeks ago. Purchase a bench scraper. 
A bench scraper is good for actually uh, when we are cooking. Let's go over towards the stove and we'll come back and forth a little bit. I'm gonna put on the heat and I'm gonna put it on medium and medium heat. I'm going to be using some olive oil. There's various types of olive oil. I usually use extra virgin olive oil for when it comes to finishing, which we'll do with this. I'm gonna add some oil to the pan and then the garlic's gonna go in there and this will just come up. And then on this side, I've got a, you can see here, these are handy if you cook a lot of vegetables and a lot of um, uh, pasta, you know, it's a cage, but you don't really need to have that. I've got four quarts of water, about 16 cups of water and a tablespoon of salt. Now we want enough water for the pasta to be able to circulate around. Let me get this up a little bit. I'm gonna get this cooking. Let me see that circulate one more time. Circulate Very around. Nice. Very good. Don't make me do the spaghetti. You haven't had the vodka yet, right? <laughs> oh, that's okay. This is to all of you, my friends. It's good to see you. Mm. Happy days. Okay, right, let's get cooking. So basically, Mrs. Spielberg, the garlic, the pan's warming up. I should have had that warming up, no worries. The, the water. Some folks will say, should I add olive oil to the water? It doesn't actually do anything. The olive oil floats on the top. We don't want to do, we don't want to coat the pasta with water. Remember, pasta is releasing the starch. So we want that starch to actually absorb the sauce. So that's the key for this, is that it absorbs the sauce. Now, Rayo's, um, I don't work for Rayo's, by the way. I'm just telling you which one's good. All of our viewers to... love Rayo's. They do? Yeah. Oh, happy days. Some people said there's some, also some good alternatives at Trader Joe's. I never, we don't, I live in Martha's Vineyard. It's an island off the East Coast. Where's everybody from as well? I haven't spoke to everybody. Because <laughs> you don't see the comments. Oh, I don't. <laughs> A lot of people from a lot of different places. Is there? All yeah. over the world? All over the world. I feel, you know, I feel so blessed to be able to spend time with you today. I really do. I'm really, every Sunday I look forward to it. I've been telling my family in England, I said, there's people from all over the world and I get to share my passion because I love cooking. I just, I wish you, anyway, let's go back to the garden. Monterey, California. Monterey, <laughs> I love Monterey. That's beautiful there. Okay, so the garlic, we're getting a small amount of colour to it. Don't burn your garlic. The problem is with garlic, when you, when you, if you add too much colour to it, it's going to burn. And you don't want that. Burnt garlic's awful. The tomato sauce goes in there. You could use your favourite marinara sauce. This works out, this sauce, about 39 cents an ounce. So it's a pretty good price, really, considering... At this stage now, you can see the garlic's in there, the tomatoes are in there, and I stay there, Mrs. Uh, Spielberg. It smells very good. Yeah, the garlic, well, once you start that garlic, it starts releasing into the kitchen. Right, so, so it comes, you. are you coming back to it? <laughs> <laughs> we never got the time. And when <laughs> we practice this, when we're cooking, we're meant to go down, and I mean, when I'm talking, <laughs> You know what's going to happen in a few weeks' time? I'm going to be this hairy monster. I'm going to look like Tiger King, and I'll be like I'll be like Steve Irwin. I'll be down there. Crikey, mate, we'll be over here cooking. <laughs> okay, so we've got a nice consistency on there. Now we're going to add the vodka to it. Oh, this is the best part. Isn't it? We add the vodka to it. And it's always important, always important, I'm up here, it's always important to make oh, sure... <laughs> <laughs> oh sausages! <laughs> oh, I. It's they always. They want to see you, or do they want to see the food? <laughs> oh, so, uh, it's always important. Taste your ingredients. Make sure your ingredients are properly. That's good. Whoa, whoa. Keith Stanner wants to see more dancing. Ah, oh, I love Keith. <laughs> oh, he's the best. He is the best. Let's okay, so we're going back in now. We can see the tomato sauce. Okay. The tomato sauce, and you could do this in a smaller pan if you wanted to as well. And stay there, Mrs. Uh, Spielberg. A little bit of chili flake, small amount of chili flake goes in there. At this stage now, I'm going to put my pasta in the pan. Pasta goes in there. We use 
And you can see that we're using a four quarts of water. It's plenty of water because it's going to be releasing the starch. When it releases that starch, we don't want it to stick together. And we want the salt in it is going to add flavor. If you don't add salt, it will completely change the way this dish is. You can see this nice consistency. Now I'm going to get some... Oh, you're moving a lot. <laughs> Sorry, Gus. I know it's one of those today where I'm back and forth, isn't it? Well, I actually got a stove for the top on the counter, but I found that it just wasn't the same, you know, with it. So I, I decided to cook on the stove. Okay. This is my family. They, they know me. I know. I love you too. So we got some oregano. Okay, let me go okay. Oregano. 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 Yeah. Uh, you, this is oregano. This is the plant itself. Usually what you'll do is if you grow this, hang it upside down and then it just dries. So this is when it's on its stem. Um, this is my spice drawer. So if you look over here, this is, this is where I keep all my spices. So this is where I've got some here. Actually, here's some. This is Greek. This one's Greek. So we've got some off. No, that's a new probably purchase it. So we're going to take a small amount. Just give it a shake. Give it a little little shake, and we're going to add some oregano to it. I keep on trying to say it like you, but I can't. Oregano. Oregano. You can do it. Oregano. <laughs> I can't do it. So we've added some oregano. If you haven't got that, feel feel free at home to use some thyme. So the pasta's cooking in the water. Who so likes the spice jar, Wendy? Wendy, thank you so much. When we first designed the studio, when I first designed it, I want everything at my fingertips. So I have my knives over here. This is where I keep my knives and my iPad. Uh, I keep, um, this is the uh, studio where we do a lot of recipe development and a lot of filming. So this is away from the home and uh, everything's try to keep as organized as possible. I try to, otherwise Mrs. Spielberg gets cross with me. Very cross. Very cross. We can see that the vodka now is cooking out. So which is a good thing that the uh, vodka's cooking out because the last thing you want to do is have your Auntie Betty singing at the table. No, it would be all right, it wouldn't. Maybe you do want your Auntie Betty singing. Um, the vodka takes about five five minutes, it'll, and it should cook out, it'll evaporate. And when you taste it, you'll taste the raw alcohol if it hasn't cooked out. Um, if you don't have vodka at home, you can use some white wine with that. You stay there for us. Um, at this stage now, we're going to add some heavy cream. Um, adding some heavy cream to there. Feel free, if you cannot have uh, cream, you could add some almond milk to this. So feel free to add that. And now we're gonna get this beautiful pink color, and that cream is gonna give it a delightful sweetness. Beautiful, beautiful sweetness. Look at that, look at the color now. The sauce at the back, and we're just gonna bring that off. This is a sauce I made earlier on. You can see the sauce. Look how thick it gets, the sauce. Can you see? Beautiful. So the pasta's cooking nicely. Now this sauce, when you think about this sauce, the basis, we added vodka to it, but if I was gonna make a piece of beef, I could add some red wine to it. If I was gonna make, um, say for instance, well, I was gonna put some shrimp, or some shellfish in there. I'd replace the vodka maybe with some, well, you actually, they would go perfect in there. But if you want to just get, you know, um, have fun in the kitchen, you could add some Sambuca to it. Sambuca has this beautiful anise fennel flavor, which gets along so well with seafood. They get to get, they get to, they go together almost like shoes and socks. They go together like hat and scarf. They go together like me and Mrs. Spielberg. Aww. Are there any substitutes for heavy cream? Yes. Besides you, almond milk, can you uh, use two percent milk. You could use two percent milk. It won't won't be as rich, which is fine. Obviously, you're looking for that. You could use that for it. Um, you could actually blend some tofu up. So blend some tofu and fold that in. You could blend some uh, cashew nuts with a bit of water. Cashew milk as well would work in there. So now we're looking at this stage as this is thickening up beautifully. We'll take a look at the pasta. The pasta's cooking. You can see that's 
working quite nice. And let's go over why this is cooking. Let's just go over to the countertop and talk a little bit about what we can do with this. Am I so, coming back? Do you, would you like to? I'm coming back. I'm just making sure I haven't gone around too hot. I don't want it to burn. Imagine it burn. Now, oh, sorry, one more thing for you, Mrs. Spielberg. Yes. At home, um, if you don't have one of these to drain your pasta, what I would say to people at home, please feel free to use a colander. I always put my measuring cup in the colander and the reason is I want to save one cup of that pasta water. That pasta water has lots of flavour and starch so if the sauce starts locking up, which sometimes it does, you can add the pasta water to it. Now remember one tablespoon of salt, four quarts of water. Some people will say it tastes like the ocean. When you taste the ocean it never tastes too pleasant. It doesn't does it? it really doesn't so I always put this in I put it inside my colander so I don't forget because what happens is we start doing Facebook lives and we forget to save one cup of the water which you want that in case it unlocks up this also is a great tip when you're doing a thicker sauce like this or if you ever deep if you ever shallow frying a piece of meat have you ever took a um say you're doing a beef roast Mrs Spielberg yes. you're doing a beef roast and when you're doing a beef roast, it has a tendency to splatter everywhere, doesn't yeah. it? All over your stove, and you think, oh no, Jimmy the Cricket. What I normally do is take my colander, and I put it upside down. And what happens is, the piece of beef or the chicken, or even the sauce now, this catches it. They sell these things called splat screens for frying pans, but I've always found they're quite flimsy and they fall apart. You use it two or three times and it's falling apart. That's a great Whereas tip. This one works out quite well. Someone was asking if you have a cookbook, but you can, maybe you can just make a reference to... Yeah, well, if you want to get a cookbook, this is the cookbook you want to get. This is Crystal's brand new cookbook. This recipe here, if you want to talk about Italian food, everybody says, and I'm sure some of our folks who've sailed with Crystal Will know Prego is some of the best Italian food ever. Absolutely delightful. This mushroom soup and the recipes inside the book. I was surprised. I was like, I am going to make this for anyone who goes when you go on the Serenity or the Symphony and you go to Prego, the mushroom soup, the carpaccio. So good. Oh, it's so good. And some of the, isn't it? The gnocchi with oh, black truffle, gnocchi. the the ravioli with beetroot. Oh, stop it. You get oh, me on my soapbox. It's the best, isn't it? Okay, so the pasta's cooking, and we still got a little while on that. Why that's cooking, I just want to come over to the side for a second. With this dish, I'm teaching you. I'm trying to go slowly because I don't want to make everyone dizzy. With this dish, I'm teaching you the basics. So, a lot of folks may think, well, what can I add as far as a protein? You could roast off some butternut squash, some fennel. Um, if you wanted to, you could take some shrimp. So shrimp would go so beautiful. And I would add these shrimp. These shrimp here, what I have a tendency to do with shrimp now, I actually cut them, and these have been peeled and deveined. I cut them in half, and then I always stick the shrimp in about one minute before serving and I find it not too tough. So I slice them in half and the reason I do that, I find it's not as toothsome and I also find that when you are doing it, it's easier to eat and it's not as dense on the tooth, but it looks like more shrimp. Because when people come for my shrimp pasta, they're like, wow, that's a lot of shrimp. And it's not really, I've sliced them in half, two for one. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. And you could add some salami to it. Salami go well. You could add some supersare to it. If you want to add some supersare, you could add some scallops. We've got some, we have some beautiful Martha's Vineyard scallops here. And what I always find with scallops is take the muscle off. Just remove the muscle from there. So please feel free at home. You could add some chicken to it. You could add some, if you want to go towards lamb with this, you could add some red wine to that sauce as well. Feel free to get creative. I'm giving you a license. Whenever you see a recipe, whether it's one of mine or some other chefs you may see, 
please don't ever just straight jacket that recipe get creative you know have fun with it kitchen's about having fun i like the straight but jacket you're like <laughs> but i can't help but i'm passionate about cooking she makes fun of me okay let's go up to the pasta so the pasta's cooking we can see it's still cooking well that rascal just in case i don't want to run out of time my biggest fear is running out of time with this segment i've got some i'm going to take the, the pasta and i'm going to add this is the pasta i just cooked it off just before actually uh the segment add the pasta now we're dressing the actual we're dre what we call dressing so we got the sauce which we made and we've got the pasta now in north america uh when they have north america they have their pasta saucier than what they would in italy in italy really the uh sauces are uh, you won't see as much sauce as what you do here in the united states when i first moved i had to learn that folks um like a bit more sauce with their pasta and they like to uh they like a bit more to dip the bread in oh gosh now i'm thinking of the bread of prego that focaccia yeah. the focaccia oh, with the olive so oil good. and the balsamic vinegar and the parmesan a lot of people salivating. Oh. okay so come inside so this pasta make sure you take out that pasta a minute or two before you're gonna serve it the last two minutes what we're gonna have now we're gonna let that pasta cook in that sauce so remember if we would have followed the box directions that pasta would have been overcooked and by the time it got into the sauce it's still cooking so that thing would have been it would have been like laying there it would have been you know like when you're on the dinghy oh, oh, oh i can't do anything whereas you don't want that now look come and take a look at the pan mrs spielberg at this stage now you can see that the pasta's all coated it's gone inside the tubes so as you have one of those tubes it goes inside it so as you pick the pasta up it's in the tube it's so good and look see the way the sauce it's not got a tremendous amount but it's all coated we've got the top of the oregano in here let's take oh, that out that's a rascal isn't it back in the old days when before i got these american teeth they are nice. yeah they are aren't they um before i got them my old teeth that would have flew through them <laughs> i used to have a gap in my teeth you could kick a field goal through it <laughs> oh look at that does not look good okay uh, let's see that's that my time okay two let's go. go two minutes to go i got a two minute warning the problem is with myself i can talk the leg off a donkey so i have to give myself a warning at this stage now everybody what we want to do is take some reggiano parmesan from the north of italy some reggiano parmesan and grate this in we're going to grate it off the heat so it doesn't get too chalky and then what we're going to do is this is uh going to be unusual for a lot of you but it actually works out well a good quality extra virgin olive oil and this adds a nice fruitiness to this dish so there's a question of what kind of olive oil uh this one is rainer r-a-i-n-e-r -E and i absolutely love it it's cool. delightful i just want to confirm i don't work for them we use this in the house and in it some mold and salt season with some salt flakes remember we cook with kosher salt we season with mold and salt some pepper freshly milled if you're going to buy a pepper mill buy one what's see-through so you can see how many peppercorns are inside so you don't run out and when it comes to serving this you can see look at the consistency of it it's not too soupy we're going to bring this into a bowl Just bring this off into a bowl and we're going to get a small amount of basil for the folks in England basil small amount of basil just a little basil like a basil tree 
Yes, it is. Fresh basil it adds that beautiful aromatics to it. If you haven't got basil, feel free to use some fresh thyme. Roll it over like a Cuban when they make the cigars. Roll the leaves over it and just take your knife thinly across, just coming across it and just add some of those basil leaves to there. And there you have an absolute, let me get a fork to try it, a delightful penny a la vodka. You could add all, all of these ingredients to it. One more thing to do, have a little try. Smells good. It's absolutely delightful. So effortless. You can make this in your home midweek. Feel free to get creative. When it comes to seasoning, add salt and pepper to your taste. Any questions before we go? Any comments before we go? You can use preserved garlic if you don't recommend the jar type. Uh, preserved, yes, you could use some preserved garlic if you can get your hands on fresh garlic, definitely. But you could use some preserved garlic for it, yeah. Any more? I want to make sure because last Everyone week... Everyone seems like they're very hungry. They are. It's been a joy spending time with you today. It won't be long before we'll be on the ocean sailing together and making lots of memories. I always like to end the show with... Uh, Alexa, let's see if she listens to me. Can you play Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong? Let's see if she does. Who's been wonderful? She understood me. She never understands me. It's your accent. Oh, sausages. I put this song on sometimes when I think about when I'm having one of those days and I think about all the beautiful memories. I think about all of you guys and I know I'll be seeing you soon. The good news is we're a week closer to being together. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining me and Mrs. Spielberg today. I hope you had a jolly nice time. I, I hope you've learned some good tips and I hope you can make this recipe in your home and share with friends and family and make, rest, make memories because that's what life's about. Until next time, I'm John Ashton. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. <laughs>